All right. Uh, this is the small, tiny little tutorial for part three on Princess Royal. Really not necessary at all, um, but I figured why not? We're doing all the parts. So uh, I think probably the most helpful thing to you will be the tab that I just made not too long ago. Um, I think probably some of you are playing some of the wrong chords at certain moments. So look at the tab and just make the changes you need to make. You're either playing a G, it's like you're playing a, like a G, an E minor, which is open, or you're playing like a C, which is just first finger on the second uh, string, first fret, a D7, which looks like this, and then and that's really about your entire chord encyclopedia for this piece. Um, now, I, I, you guys don't really change at all. You do have these like at the ends of phrases every now and again, but you are just for the 99% of your time uh, playing these chords. Now, I just want to talk a little bit about the technique. Um, so, the first part, you can do like this, like thumbs on the G string, and then your first two fingers, like your index fingers on the second string, middle fingers on the first string. That's fine. Two, three, four. One, two, three, four. Two, three, four. Two, see that there's no problem with this and the good thing is that really sets you up well for what comes after which is uh, the arpeggios now notice in these arpeggios you got stems going down and you've got stems going up right this is two different voices so I mean in this case what it is actually telling you is that you're you need it it needs to sound like two different voices so your thumb should be playing all the down stem notes, and your fingers should be playing the up stem notes. And this will be true for every part of this piece. Um, let me show you what that's going to look like a little bit. If you've been following along in class with our arpeggios, then you're really well prepared for this. Uh, like, it starts with a full plant because we start in, with an ascending arpeggio. Let me show you one more time. Do you see that the direction of these first three notes? They're going up, right? Starting here, going up, and finally up. So we know that anytime we have an ascending arpeggio, we need to fully plant our fingers. And that's so I mean it should start out you should start out looking like this. Like thumb is every everybody is on the string they're gonna play, right? And then I am okay, now I comes down by itself because now we're going down technically. We're sequentially planting our way back. And thumb goes by itself, and then the full plant begins again. I by itself, thumb by itself. So this is constantly, this is what you do. Right? I mean, the better, the more comfortable you get, the faster you'll be able to go. Now, we don't need to go fast at all for this piece, but it's one of those techniques that can go lightning speed if you want it to. So, um, I really, I'm telling you that your biggest challenge, part three, is just making sure you don't play the wrong chord. And, and because there are some awkward chord changes in the song, it's a very old song before we kind of settled on really where we like harmony to move. So you will hear a few odd moments. They resolve just fine, but it, in the moment you're like, is, it that, is that the right chord? You gotta really watch and follow. Um, and really part four should be with part three at the same time. If you wanted to feel a little, you know, like when I play this in class, I play part four and three at the same time. They go together. It really should be. The benefit of splitting them up is that they're more clear. Uh, your part is more clear and that's less room for mistakes. Part four is much more simple because they're just playing one note. So they're going to probably put those notes in the right places, right? It can get a little bit uneven for younger players when you're doing, you know, these combined things. So it makes sense.
Now, if you wanted to play both at once, I would not stop you. But you would need to be able to look at both at once uh, using the score. Anyway, let's move on because this is already getting too long. Uh, the only time you have that technical break is like, here's an example right here. Uh, oh, you're not looking, sorry. Like right here at the end of the phrase. And that just looks like this. Thumb, index the middle. But you want to keep, you know, you're going to suck in your ring finger and your index finger. So it's going to be like a, I mean, it's an A, it, it is an A minor chord. I mean, this is A minor. So you should use the fingers that, that you would use in an A minor chord. So allow me to uh, write that in there. I'm going to put a two, three, and one, and then zero, zero. So, uh, sorry. And now, also, importantly, I know you can't see the stem because this is a whole note, but I want you to notice that this E is notated as a whole note. Whole notes get how many beats? Four. You don't want to cut that note off. You don't want to lift your finger that's fretting that note. So you need to get used to what it feels like to just lift up your first and third fingers independently from your second finger. This is starting to make sense why we do so much in finger independent stuff because you need to have independent fingers. So here we go. These two suck in, and then two stays on as one and three come off. So that still rings. So the guitar is still ringing this lovely E minor chord, right? See how it still rings? You hear this? That that's what it wants. That's what it. That sounds good that way. That's why they want it that way. Um, yeah. So again, same technique. Same stuff. Be very careful about these chords because they, like I said, some of them are a little awkward appearing or they come at awkward times, it seems like. But they do resolve and it does sound right when it's all together. Again, that's all I really have to say about it uh, because the very last measure is the thing we just went over, which is the only thing that is different from this. Honestly, that, that, that's all I can say about it. I, <laughs> it's not that complicated. Um, like I said, follow along carefully. Make sure you're playing the right chord at the right time, and you'll be fine. I think this tab will help you because it probably will look obvious if the numbers are different than where you're fretting. So use the tab to your advantage. Um, yeah, any other questions you have, just email me. Ask me in class. I'll be happy to help you. Uh, I, I think I've covered everything I, I can. So good luck, and I'll see you in class.